beautiful. Greetings, friends! We are here again at the National Heirloom Expo in Santa Rosa, California. And we're actually at the same very picnic table that we were at with Roots and Refuse. But this time we are here with Catherine with Dirt Patch Heaven. And welcome. And Catherine, can you tell everyone a little bit about your channel? And uh, their channel dynamics work a little bit different than ours, but we've had the opportunity to meet them here and they were outside spinning some yarn and doing some neat things. But I wanted to introduce you all, our viewers, to them at Dirt Patch Heaven because they're doing some fantastic things on their channel too. Thanks, Mike. So yeah, we're, I'm teamed up with Julie, who is Dirt Patch Heaven, and we are all about homesteading and traditional skills. So yeah, Mike uh, saw us. Today we are focusing on spinning. And so what we're doing is we are taking raw locks from sheep and turning it into yarn. And that is one of many skills that we feel passionate about passing on to our children and anyone who's interested in learning. So we feel that over the ages and specifically the last two generations that there has been a huge decline in the skills that we as individuals know and I think it's to our detriment as a society because I, I think a skillless society is a dependent society which is terrifying. Here I've noticed that there's a lot of focus on the culture of growing your own food and also passing that culture down to the next generations. One of the reasons that we're here, or the main reason that we are here is Baker Creek invited us to come out here and to be a part of the children's area. And they're serious about that, of passing things down to the next generation. What are some of the things that you all do on your homestead to make sure that things are passed down, these skills are passed down to the next generation? And so, well, I have children as well, and as best I can, I involve them. My older teenagers are a little less interested as they've got their social lives and they've got a different agenda. My oldest is definitely more into it than my middle child. And so I try to let them have freedom. I don't want to force them into it. And if they're interested in asking questions, I will freely share, but I won't pressure them into uncomfortable situations. Uh, we do raise animals that we do process for meat. We garden, we, I have goat, that are in milk. I take their milk and then we turn them into products like cheese and soap. And I actively involve the kids in that. And specifically my youngest, she's got a passion for anything homesteading. And so she loves to be a part of everything from the planting of seeds to the harvesting. She's even involved in butchering. And because it's been less, we've been on our journey for about five years now, it's not unusual or scary or weird for her. It's very much a normal part of our life. And they've got a real uh, deep understanding of life from both beginning to end and what it takes in order to provide food for a plate. That is absolutely fantastic. Sayla, I know you remember some of the some of our times of just hatching chicks and ducklings. It's just powerful to see life come into being, isn't it? Yep. So I've worked, there's been a number of the activities going on about encouraging uh, gardening with kids. I had an opportunity to be a part of that panel and that talk. Uh, what, were, what are some points, some nuggets that you would like to share with parents, grandparents, and other people who are out there about getting children involved in some of these skills? That's just do it. Uh, if you're doing it, ask them if they want to be involved. If they're asking questions, bring them in and involve them in it. If they're showing any sort of interest, don't push them away. Don't think that they're, don't ever think that anybody is too young. You are never too young to start. And the later you wait, the more resistant they become because they get set in this mindset of this is the way things are. So you've got this beautiful window of opportunity when children are young and they're inquisitive and they want to know. Take advantage of that. You're exactly right, Catherine. Uh, those of you who have seen our channel and watched our channel for some time now, you've seen little Mike out there helping out, and he's only two. Especially at the, that young age from two to four, they're really engaged and curious about life, and those are prime opportunities to get them involved. But whatever the age, try to actually make sure that you involve your children in what you're doing. It's been, it's been sad to see that I've heard that in past generations that parents and grandparents and great 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 parent grandparents didn't let the children get involved in the task on the farm in the homestead and it, it ha and it as a it came as a detriment to those children because these skills were lost as these generations have come by and we're at the point where we are now where a lot of people don't know how to do some of these skills that they are lost arts 
So uh, I really encourage all of you to participate in in passing down the legacy of some of these skills if you if you know them and as you're learning them yourself because there's a lot of platforms out there like on YouTube that which I've learned from and uh, that you can learn these skills and begin implementing them but then as you begin implementing them and that's really where you learn is hands-on of how to do these things and then really engage the, the next generation in doing those things um, I, I saw earlier when you were spinning the yarn uh, what are some of the things that, that uh, you enjoy about doing that and, and I know you're getting some kids involved in doing we that are, as well. We are and in fact that's what Baker Creek uh, brought us back for because we were invited to be a part of the spring planting festival and we were in the main Baker Creek booth and Lisa C who is part of the Baker Creek crew watched as we had dozens if not hundreds of kids approach us during our two days there and they sat at our feet and they were just so amazed by the process. And so they really, they're curious, they want to know. And so just involving them in that, uh, something that I love about spinning, what I find attractive about it is it's really, it's a connection with your mind and your body. You have to focus, you sit there and it's not so much at first, any skill you develop at first is awkward and uncomfortable and there's this period of frustration. But once you get beyond that, and especially with the spinning, I found, and Julie told me this would happen, she says it's very zen. And at first it was the opposite of zen. I was extremely stressed and I didn't understand it. And even though my mind got it, my body didn't coordinate with me. And so stay with it. Don't give up. Don't let frustration on the front end discourage you. Push through it. If your goal is big enough, if your dream is big enough, you can see beyond that initial frustration. And so once I got beyond that, once my body and my mind started clicking and I was able to draft my fiber correctly and my uh, petals are spinning at the right pace and everything just kind of started flowing. It became extremely peaceful and it's now my favorite time of the day. I spin in the evenings uh, just before bedtime and it's very calming. It looks like it as I was watching you all out there it, it is almost hypnotizing to watch you do it. It's just so beautiful to see it as the yarn is just turning. What do you think, Sayla? I think it's pretty cool. You think you'd like to learn to do that one day? Yeah. That would be cool. What are some of the earliest ages that you've started kids doing that? I really can start at any age. I know that Julie's kids started at like two, three years wow. old. So my daughter's seven. I'm relatively new to spinning and she just loves getting her hands on fiber. So she's learning how to properly prepare fiber. And my next step with her is gonna be to put her on the spinning wheel. That is absolutely fantastic. And we talked earlier, this is another person who is interested in ducks. And you know, those of you who've seen our channel, you know that I really like ducks and prefer ducks and Sailor does too. They're really a fun animal. Can you tell us a little bit about the ducks that you raised? So I've got, I've got Indian runner mixes and then I've got Muscovies. And I, ducks are by far my favorite. I have chickens. I love ducks and uh, they, I call my chickens my chicken destroyers. I open range, I was telling Mike earlier, I don't call it, I don't call it, what's the proper term? Uh, pa uh, free free range. range. Yeah, I don't call them free range, I call them open range. I love that term. <laughs> because they have no constraints. They come and go, they have freedom. I've got 20 acres and they are fully free to take advantage of every bit of it. And they usually stick pretty close to the house. And like I said, I call them my chicken destroyers. So where I had landscaping before I was a homesteader, I now have minimal landscaping because the chickens have gone up and they've scratched and they've un uprooted most of my plants. I continue to fight my battle because I'm redheaded and stubborn, so I keep planting. And so I do have some landscaping, but what I found predominantly grows for me, interestingly enough, is vegetables in my front yard. And the chickens, for whatever reason, leave them alone. But yeah, I would take, if, it, if I had a choice and had to choose between chickens and ducks, ducks would be my preferred fowl every day. That's, that is fantastic. Yes, they, the ducks are really cool hearing them whack and they really have a neat personality. So uh, yes, I really love them. Do you get your kids involved with the ducks at all? My youngest loves the okay. ducks, yeah. yeah. That is fantastic. Oh. So she has the open range chickens and open range ducks yep. too. I have what I like to call the jungle or forest chickens because our, our chickens are mostly raised in the, the woods and forest area where we live. 
But uh, Catherine, would like to thank you for being on our channel. And do uh, you have Instagram of your own? or I do, okay. yes. I actually, I'm on Facebook and Instagram under Little Bits of Heaven Homestead. And then I'm partnered up with Julie at Dirt Patch Heaven. And she has Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube under Dirt Patch Heaven. That's great. So make sure you check her, check her out. Check her and Julie out. They're doing some pretty neat things. They have a lot of neat videos. And they are also helping to pass on the legacy of some of these things, these lost arts, and making them known and passing them on to the next generation. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Catherine, thank you for having us. Thank, uh, you, thank you for being on here with us and joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment below, even if it's just to say, hey. Also, make sure you don't miss any of our new videos. So, subscribe and sign up to receive notifications each time we release a new video. Also, you may want to check out these videos right here. And also check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. See you next time.